To understand hematocrit, we first have to understand what blood is, okay? <laughs> and that seems like a, a strange uh, thing to mention, but we have to understand what is included in blood, okay? First of all, with blood, we have a fluid portion, and that's what's referred to as plasma. Then we also have a solid portion, okay? So we have fluids and solids, and the solid portion of our blood includes the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and platelets, okay? Hematocrit refers to the packed cell volume or percentage of red blood cells in volume of whole blood. So for example, if we have a hematocrit of 41, what that means is that in a volume of 100 milliliters of blood, there's 41 milliliters of packed red blood cells. So a really easy way to think of this is just, it's the percentage of red blood cells to total blood volume. For adult males, our normal range is about 43 to 49. For females, it's about 38 to 44. So females are going to have a little bit lower hematocrit, meaning they have a little bit less volume of red blood cells to total blood volume. So as I just alluded to, the main determinant in hematocrit is going to be the number of RBCs. But what also plays a role in this is going to be the size of the RBCs. Okay, so if we have swollen red blood cells in conditions where we have like high serum sodium levels, that would cause the, the, swell, the cells to swell, this is going to cause our hematocrit to elevate as well. Now, hematocrit is going to be a, a lab value that we run often, okay? It's part of our CBC, and it should be looked at in conjunction with our RBCs as well as our hemoglobin, okay? So all three of these lab values should really be looked at together because conditions that affect one are going to really affect the other. There's two conditions that are very important to be aware of. First is polycythemia, and then there's anemia. So polycythemia is a term that's used to identify conditions where you have abnormally high levels of hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cells, whereas anemia is a term used to indicate decreases in hematocrit, hemoglobin, and red blood cells. So it's really important to look at all three of these values very closely and how they play into each other. And to further illustrate this point, you can actually use one value to kind of estimate what the other value is going to be. For example, generally, hematocrit should be about three times what hemoglobin is. And your red blood cells, if multiplied by three, should give you an approximate hemoglobin value. Okay, so these three values really play into each other and they really all make up a huge portion of, of what our blood is. And then they can tell us different conditions that are going on within the body based on if our hemoglobin is normal, hematocrit's normal and things that we can really look at and start to estimate what might be going on with the patient. So quickly before we move on, hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells in a volume of whole blood. So some of the reasons a provider is going to order this test is that it helps to evaluate a, a suspected anemia. Okay, so what's is, does a patient have anemia uh, based on clinical signs and symptoms? It can also be used to monitor blood loss in response to, to um, providing blood to the patient. Uh, are they returning to normal values and how is the patient doing? It can also be used to monitor... Uh, fluid balance within a patient, and it's really something that's going to be run uh, normally on a patient, okay? Uh, even a patient that's doing just fine, this is the CBC is a test that's going to be run very routinely on patients, okay? It just gives us a very good overall picture of the patient's total health. So like we said, polycythemia is a condition that, or a name that we use to identify elevated hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cells. We might see an elevated hematocrit in shock, and erythrocytosis. Some conditions where we'd see a decreased hematocrit would be anemia. Like we said, anemia refers to decreased hematocrit hemoglobin red blood cells. We obviously also would see it in blood loss. We could see it in burns. We could, and we'll see it in chronic disease. So these patients that come into the hospital and are there for days and weeks and stuff, we would start to see decreased hematocrit, okay? So there are some critical values with this. If, if a patient gets a hematocrit below 18%, okay, that would indicate severe hemodilution. And very severe hemodilution can actually lead to cardiac uh, failure and death. So it's very important to monitor this and make sure our blood is not becoming too dilute. Now, if a patient has very high values, for example, greater than 54, 55%, this would be referred to as hemoconcentration. And this can start leading to, to spontaneous clotting. So the value I want you to keep in mind is going to be for males, about 43 to 49, 50%, and females, 38 to 44%.